Advertisement for the personal column of the Melbourne Argus. A handsome reward will be given to any person who can furnish such information as will discover the fate of my son, Oswald Arthur Nettlefield, who sailed from Sao Paulo on the 20th of April, 1825, in the ship the Isabella, and has never been heard of since. It's 14 years ago, Mother. A report reached England to the effect that a portion of the crew and passengers was picked up by a vessel bound to Melbourne, Australia. But, Mother... Shh. It's all right, Dodie. It is not known whether the said Oswald Arthur Nettlefield was among the drowned or saved. He would at the present time be about 39 years of age, is of a delicate constitution, rather tall, with very light brown hair and blue eyes. Mr Nettlefield is the son of Arthur Nettlefield, now deceased, and is heir to all his estates. He's not dead. My pet lamb will come back one day. I know he will. His mother's been putting an advertisement in the Melbourne Argus for, for 14 years, Pip, and, and, and he's to turn... Turned up? Well, somebody's to turned up three months ago. The trouble is, not everyone believes it's Oswald. The Yard got in touch, did they? Um, no, uh, not exactly. I, I got in touch with them. Oh? Oswald's sister, Dodie, is, is, is a friend of my intended, Florence. Uh, Dodie wants me to meet her tomorrow. The, the Yard says it seems worth looking into. Well, first case then, eh? <laughs> well, here I am. Pip Shepherd, all set to working with a peeler. Who'd have fooled it? No more than I'd have thought of working with a B Bow Street runner three months ago. You don't mind my seeing uh, Dodie by myself first, do, do, do you, Pip? No. She's n n nervous, you, you understand. I'm moving in here tomorrow anyway. Did yet? Well, I, I leave the Bow Street lodgings, didn't I? Nowhere else. Oh, uh, 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 of course. Um, well, well what, what, what better place, eh? <laughs> new beginnings all round. New, new beginnings. <laughs> East uh, Happy New Year, P Pip. <laughs> Happy New Year, Tom. <laughs> London Particulars by John Peacock. With Todd Carty as Pip Shepherd and Charles Simpson as Thomas Tedman. Play two. A cuckoo in the nest. Here we are, then. I hope you'll be comfortable. Catherine's old room, eh, Mrs Vermelo? Not still in it by any chance. Oh, you know very well Mr Vermelo likes to keep, keep a nice house. Well, he does. Only kidding you. Not left, is she? No, she's gone to Whitby for Christmas. See her parents. I've taken her on to help me with the running of the place since Mr Vermelo's not been too bright. When she comes back, she's moving into our private quarters. She'll do any laundry you might need, otherwise anything you want to do yourself, there's a pump in the yard. And how is she? She's very well. Her boyfriend, Michael Tovey's not turned up, if that's what you mean. But she's much more settled and I hope she stays that way. There'll be no problems with me, Sarah. <laughs> I never thought there would be. I care too much for her. I know. But you must find someone else. <sighs> I hope she's not the reason you've decided to stay with us. Oh, no. Got me eyes set somewhere else already. Good. And your little boy, Alfred... If you ever wanted to bring him here to stay for a few days, I'm sure we could sort something out. As I told Florence, he says he's Oswald. Mother believes him, of course. She's absolutely convinced. She dotes on him. And so does my brother, Ned. But you don't? No. Not enough to let him claim father's entire estate, which he will do if mother has her way. 
He has all the right answers, but doesn't remember very much of life before the shipwreck at all. She's having open house in the country for a few days to introduce him to family and friends. Party on the first night, and we're joining the hunt on the last day. You and Florence wouldn't join us, would you, Thomas? With your experience of human nature, Tom, you could wheedle out a cuckoo at 200 paces. Uh, Any help uh, you could give would be much appreciated. Uh, are, are you asking me as a p- policeman, Dodie? Well, I... no. As a friend of mine, Tom, for old time's sake. Uh, They'll know you're the son of Judge Tedman, but that's all. I don't want them to know you're a policeman. If I find something is wrong, I, I should have to represent the law. For, for my part, that is why I shall be there. And why I have received p- permission to be there. Yes, I understand that. A- a- and if I do come, I'll, I'll be bringing along my new p- partner. Your Bow Street runner, he could be there as your manservant. Well, I... I it's I, I, perfect! What's his name? It's, it's, it's Pip. Pip, 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 Pip Shepherd. Let me know where, and I'll pick you both up in my carriage on Friday morning. I'll put you on top of that wall. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Lucy, what are you doing? It's not safe up there. Get down. Like Will you get her down, sir? Of course. Oh, now look what you've done to the gentleman's shirt. It was all my own fault. I apologise, Mrs. It was me that started the larking. <laughs> all this excitement. There'll be tears before bedtime. Oh, I hope not. Get back in our own yard, Lucy. Oh, Ma! And don't you go winking at her. She must learn to do as she's told. Go on now, Lucy. In. You called me by my name. How did you know it? You were in the bar on New Year's Day. I saw you. I liked you. So I asked someone. You're the Bow Street runner, aren't you? So we were disbanded, yeah. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I've something in the offing. Well, then... A man with something in the offing can't afford to lose a shirt. If you bring it round, I'll see it's mended for you. Oh, I wouldn't want to bother you. Other side of the wall, that's where I live. Above the Chandler shop. Bring it around tonight. Hey, uh, come in, Thomas. I can't do that. Not tonight. Well, any night, then. I close my shop at eight o'clock. Bag packed and ready? Yes, Thomas. Got the c- carriage waiting. Carriage? Uh, Fl- Florence is. I thought we should arrive in style, eh? Is that all you got? Uh, yes. Oh, come on, then. <clears throat> Thomas was uh, telling me the Netterfields made their money from cocoa and chocolate. Don't know much about it myself. It c- comes in beans, doesn't it, Florence? I believe. That's what Oswald was doing when he disappeared, buying supplies. Went down in a sea of cocoa, eh? <laughs> that is, if they had a chance to load it up. When did you last see Oswald? He came to my 14th birthday party. What was he like? Not very nice, if I remember. Spoiled. Do you think you'll know it's him? I'm not sure. But his mother says he is. And you'd think she'd know, wouldn't you? Well, even after f- 14 years? Even if she'd never seen him for 44 years. Why'd you say that? If I hadn't seen my boy for 14 years, there'd be... Well, I know there'd be something to signify. Your boy? Pip has a son, uh, Alfred. I'd like to think so, at any rate. Where is Alfred? Does he live with you at the uh, hotel? No. Is he with his mother? His mother died giving birth to him. He's three now. He lives down in Kent with me parents. Oh, Pip, I'm sorry. Tell me about her. Honestly, Florence, I... It's all right, Tom, I'd like to. I haven't talked to her in a good while. Her name was Mary. And she was as pretty as a picture. You weren't there, Reverend. If you'd only heard the way Oswald called me mother on that first meeting at Gravesend. Calm yourself, mother. It was a reconciliation to shame the prodigal son. Who was he? Ned will verify. Ned, tell the Reverend. It was very moving. However moving, I should not think of killing the fatted calf just yet, Marjorie. Is my horse ready? It's on its way, sir. Did you not notice the marked resemblance to his father? The turn of the chin? The hold of the head? I can't say I did. But he's certainly stouter. There's no doubt in my mind. He's an imposter. The man is a charlatan. 
He knows neither the biblical verses he learnt as a boy, nor has he any recollection of our last meeting. And by her own account, did he not walk past Dodie, his very own sister, without showing one smidgen of recognition? That's right, Mother, he did. Oswald remembers very little of his life before the shipwreck. But Ned is convinced by him, and so am I. Do you doubt the recognition of a brother and a mother? I do, Marjorie. I am afraid you are suffering a great self-delusion. We shall see. But I would not have wished you such a Jeremiah in this time of great reunion and happiness for me. That must be Florence's coach. I will go and leave you to greet your guests. Mind your step, Florence. Ah, uh, Ned! Tom! (laughs) Haven't seen you since Eton. Welcome to Nettlefield. Crumbling ruin that it is. Mother, this is Florence Hatfield. How do you do? How do you do? And you remember Thomas Teddy? I'm so glad Dodie invited you both. Mrs. Nettlefield. Uh, this is Pip, uh, Mr. Pip Sh- Shepherd. Get him to take your bags upstairs, eh? And you and I'll open a bottle. Oh, it's all right, Pip. I-, I can take them. Oh, thank you, Tom. What did he say? He, he said thank you. No, I mean, what did he call you? What? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you, Master Thomas. Damn well think so, too. And Jane? Yes, Miss Dobie? You can show Mr Shepherd to his room. Back of the stables. I wouldn't be in my job long if I spoke to Miss Dodie like that. It's all right. We have an understanding, Tom and me. <laughs> the room's through here. There you go again with your Tom. Only in private, of course. <laughs> Tom! I would never choose to call him by that name in public. I should think not. You ought to try it yourself sometime. Oh, good night, Dodie. She'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a nice room. I come in here when I want to get away from people. Better company horses than folk most of the time. You look after Miss Dodie then, do you? Usually, but I've been put to looking after Mr Oswald's young lady while she's here. Miss Cora. Don't see much of her mind. And Mr Oswald? Oh, no, not him at all. Mrs Nettlefield keeps him well and truly under wraps. She got him out of his room this morning to meet the vicar, and it caused such a hullabaloo he went straight back in again. She'll be up there now, getting ready for the unveiling tonight. Half the town's coming. I would not care were he the Archbishop of Canterbury himself, nor the Pope, even. That vicar will never be admitted to this house again. He has so upset Oswald... And just when he was coming out of himself, just when I felt his mind was beginning to see the light... Mother, don't you think you might be believing what you want to believe rather than the truth? Of course I want to believe he's my son, whoever he is. But he is, Dodie. He is Oswald. The Oswald I held in my arms as a child. The Oswald who followed in his father's footsteps. The Oswald of the shipwreck, cut off from those he loved these 14 years in Wagga Wagga. And I would know him anywhere. The very spit of his father. Why can't you see it? The finest figure of a man you ever saw. He even has his father's beard. And here are you, my daughter and the church, rallied against me to prove me wrong. (laughs) You, You can't believe he's after the estate. He has everything he wants. Money, looks... Betrothed to an enchanting, accomplished young lady. Musical. Poetic. And our home shall be, our home shall be, a pleasant cot in a tranquil spot with a distant view of the changing sea. My cottage is a magic seam, the sheltering bus in evergreen. As it flows along, is murmuring a fairy song. The stream that as it flows along, is murmuring a fairy song. Come dwell with me, come dwell with me. Come, 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 come dwell with me, come dwell with me. Come dwell. 
Oswald. Say a few words, Pet. Uh, I'm not one for saying much, Mother. I... I know, Pet Lamb, but it's expected. I, uh... <clears throat> I'm so happy to be here with you today. Surrounded by so many faces that I would have thought... Had I a memory... I should never see again. Fourteen years is a long time. <coughs> and most of my life, before the sinking of the Isabella, is lost to me. Uh, but already I, I can feel old friends tugging at my memory. <laughs> Nan there, whose books I carried to school. Professor Trickett, <laughs> who taught both Ned and me. And some not here. Reverend Chandler whose verses, taught to me as a child, were comfort in my darkest hours. Soon, in the bosom of my family and with the support of my dearest, sweet-voiced Cora, I'm sure it will seem as I've never been away. Memories of South America, of Australia, gone forever. I will finally thank my beloved mother, who never gave up hope, and whose prayers... And mine have finally been answered. Oh, Oswald. Music. Oswald and Cora will start the dance. Cora? Oswald. What do you think of Cora? Oh, not a lot. Slatternly. Clearing up for her is worse than a spring clean. She just steps out of everything, leaves it where it lies, doesn't even bother to unbutton things. Soon as there's an old big enough for her to get her head through, it's off. <laughs> get shot in a button fire, eh? <laughs> See? Look at this one. Not just a button off, that's torn. Best linen. I'm supposed to wash and mend all these. Ruined. Calls herself a lady. I see. And you know something? Every single thing that she wears is brand new. Made in London. From her ankies to her ni nether garments. Knickers, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And her cases as well, all brand new. Towels, linen. Why do you think that is then? I don't know. But why didn't she bring anything from Australia with her? Now there's a thing. And there's another. What is it? Your cocoa. We have to have it every night to remember what we owe our employment to. Oh. <laughs> I don't care what you do with yours. I always throw mine down the sink. Funny thing, that. Just like my old man. People swear he was in the whiskey business. Why? Because I have a drop every night. <laughs> Would you like to join me? Oh, thank you very much. Very kind. I shan't throw this down the plug hole. <laughs> So what do you think, Flo? Don't call me that. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Florence, um, what do you think? D don't stop dancing. About what? Oswald. You, you danced with him. Yes. So? Well, what do you think? Did, did you dance with the true Oswald Nettlefield? Well... Or not? Yes. You did? I'm sure it's him, Tom. Well, how, how do you know? Well, I... No, seriously. Seriously, I'm sure it's him. What, is it something he said? No, it's something I don't think it could possibly know to do if he wasn't Oswald. Well, but what? Shh, keep dancing. Oh, Florence. Trust me. Let me be sure first. <laughs> Tisn't him. <laughs> how do you know? Cook says. And Cook's been here since Master Oswald was a little boy. But how does she know? Oh, Cooks know everything. So if Cora came from Australia, like she says, why did she bring nothing with her? Everything she wears is new. Everything bought in London, and her cases. Everything. No. Oh, maybe she's as wealthy as Oswald says, but what has she seen him? Not much. Only shook his hand. Just like holding a wet codlin. Hmm. C C Cora's gone back to London. Tonight? As soon as the party finished, business trip, she said, had to be there early morning. Anyway, I'm having a word with Chandler tomorrow, local vicar. The story is he's been banned from the house since he dared doubt Oswald's authenticity. See if I can get more family background. What shall I do? 
I, I, I think you should go to London. See if you can find out anything else about Cora. Just, just, just make sure you're back in time for the uh, the hunt on Monday. Uh, I, I don't know where you make a start. Um, don't worry. I've got an idea or two. Rub a dub dub. Rub a dub dub. Don't you rub a dub me. I'm all behind. Oh, I shall stick to Coco in future. Nice though, eh? <laughs> Taking advantage of a young girl. I did nothing of the kind. <laughs> I know. And I wouldn't have minded. Wouldn't you? Well, it was nice of you not to. Those Miss Coras? No, I've done them. They're on the line. These are Miss Dodie's. On the line, eh? What did you want me for? Just to say I'm off back to town. Oh. But I'll see you tomorrow, eh? <laughs> More cocoa. <laughs> I don't know how you've got the nerve coming to see me. I know. Looking for a job, are you? Now they've got rid of the Bow Street runners. I only take on girls. You want Mary, number 43. She takes on Nancy's. You're a dress hire, and it's something I need to know, Dolly. Oh, yeah. You all come here when you want something. You don't care, sod all otherwise. I'm sorry, Dolly. Time's bad, eh? Oh, can't tell you how bad. Not if I tried. However hard. Losing Ethel, what did it for me? Best friend I ever had, Ethel. No new girls worth tuppence. Yeah, well, anyway, don't mind me. How's that young lady? You mean Catherine? Yeah. A young man ever show, Michael Tovey? Not yet. Nor never will, if you ask me. So, what do you want? Drop us something short? No, thanks, Dolly. I think I might. I need your help. If I wanted a wire or buy some really splashy clothes in a hurry, where'd I go? Mm. Here, got this nice uh, bit of rose silk. Just come in. New and all. Well, new as makes no difference. No, Dolly. Really splashy. All new made. Every item of clothing. Fit for a lady. Oh. Can't fit much of her if you're hiring them, can you? Well, is that all the help you can give me? Got a lady's, uh undergarment here. Oh, you're a dark horse. Not your cat. Now, it's the maker I want, Dolly. The initials LL on it. See? I'll give it here. Oh, chemise, eh? Oh, LL London. Fine cotton. Oh, there's a stain here. Cocoa. Oh. Soon remedied. It's all and all. No matter. LLA. Looks quality till you see the stitching. Nah, nah. That's Lydia Lamotte, Brewer Street. On R, is it? Yeah, she only dare I stuff for 48 hours. Else it falls off your back and you're left standing in your wear with us. Lily Lamotte, eh? Brewer Street. If that's what you want, I've told you. I see. Thank you, Dolly. There is something else. Thought there might be. Couldn't get into the rose silk, could you? <laughs> Dirty. Worth a few guineas. Oh, how many's a few? Five. <sighs> Rose silk, eh? A couple of hours, maybe, with a deal of whalebone and a bit of letting out. Then listen. This is what I want you to do. Oh, Mr Tedman. You wouldn't be asking me to betray the secrets of my oldest friends, would you now? However ill-advised they may be at this time. Miss Dodie said I may c confide in you? Oh. So you're acting on Miss Dodie's behalf, are you? Y yes, yes, yes. Well, the Nettlefield estate is in a terrible mess. You see, 14 years ago, when the Isabella was lost at sea with a full cargo, it was carrying the hopes for all the family. Indeed, the shock killed Arthur. He could no longer face life. He had Ned... A ne'er do well, son. And Dodie. Everything he had was left to Oswald should he return. Uh, and if he didn't return? Uh, why, then the fortune was to bypass a generation and be held in trust for the firstborn male child of either Dodie or Ned uh, when they reach their 21st birthday. So who handles the everyday b b business affairs? Uh, the family solicitor and myself. Ah. But nothing can be sold be land or businesses. 
And it's just about covering itself. But not for much longer. The marshal see. The debtor's prison lies just around the corner. So if Oswald were to m- materialise, then, then the family's financial problems would, would be over? Oh, that would depend. On what? Right, on Oswald. Everything would be his to do with as he wished. Hmm. Why are you so sure that the man p- purporting to be Oswald is, is an imposter? I gave me tangible reasons to Marjorie Nettlefield. But spiritually, there is no similarity. And you are convinced? Absolutely. Hmm. How how would you physically describe Oswald Nettlefield as as you last saw him 14 years ago? He was about six foot two. Fair-haired with blue eyes. Lean. Oh, and with weak hands. He had a terrible weak grip, like his father. So shaking his hand was like like holding a wet coddling... Well, you could say that, yes. <laughs> yes. Good morning, madam. Can I be of service to you? I want to see Miss Lamott. I've come on behalf of Miss Cora Delaney. The chemise. It was part of an order for Monsieur Nettlefield. Yes, for my mistress. That is so. Beautiful. Is it not beautiful? Yes, except as how it has unfortunately got a tear on the buttonhole and cocoa on it. Well, I do not know what we can do with it. She don't want it cleaning, pet. She wants to buy a new one. Ah, then there is no problem. Where shall I deliver it? Mr Laney is at the moment residing in the country. Then I shall send it there, yes? Um, or to the London address. W- would that be uh, St James's apartment? No. The clothes were delivered to Mr. Nettlefield at a gentleman's club, the Coal Hole, just off the Strand. Afraid you can't go through there, sir. Club back there. Members only. I'll meet Mr. Nettlefield later. Didn't he say I was expect? Very good, sir. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, thank you. Now, before our next song, a toast. Gentlemen... Adam's Root, which Eve planted in her little garden and which we all sprung from, eh? (laughs) Gentlemen, Adam's Root! William threw Marjorie down on the floor and with his stout gimlet began for two New here, aren't you, sir? I'm Bessie. Yes, I... Like some uh, comfort, would you, sir? Well, I... Sit down yonder, shall we? Glass of ale? Or rum, is it? You look like a rum man to me, sir. Well... <laughs> Don't say I'm mistaken. I should be so disappointed. Well, I... I... Well, what, sir? Well, I, 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 I wouldn't want that. Rum for our friend Jenny. A gin for me. Sit alongside you, shall I, sir? Uh, <laughs> cosy and tosh, eh? There. Uh, oh, um... All cosy and tosh. <laughs> Rum and a gin. Thank you, Jenny. What is it, sir? Not to your liking, am I? There are lots of other girls. I shan't take offence. We all help each other here. No, it's just... Something familiar. Who are you looking for? A girl called Cora. There's only one Cora works here and she's standing right in front of you. What? That's her, singing. What? Good God. Floyd without any humming. There I told you, said she, there was somebody coming. <laughs> Cora! Oh, Lord! Well, you've seen her now, and she's seen you. So what's wrong with me being friendly with Mr Nettlefield? And what's it got to do with you? That's what I want to know. He's employing me. And if I get some pretty clothes out of it, so what? You said you were from Australia. I'm an actress. It's a job. I can be from wherever anybody wants me to be. I've played rummer parts than this. It's just so bleeding boring in the country. It's all right for a day out, but... Who are you, anyway? 
<laughs> Are you playing silly beggars? I'm Mr Tedman's manservant on a night out. And it's time for me to go. Oh, uh, I'd be... Uh, I'd be very much obliged if you'd tell no one about this. Well, about seeing me here. And I'd be much obliged, Miss Cora, if you do the same. Mm. It's a deal, then. Hey, my bit. Fancy seeing you here. I'm afraid you've got me wrong, sir. Oh, no, no, it's Bert. Nightwatch, Mayfair. You're mistaken, sir. Oh, oh la di da too snotty for old mate's nail and the peelers, eh? <laughs> peelers? I tell you, sir, you are mistaken. Uh, oh, uh, I see. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, now I sees you in a better light, I, I can tell you're not the fella I took you for. I beg your pardon. Sorry to intrude. <laughs> Going so soon, sir. Nothing taking your fancy. I'll be obliged if you've not mentioned my being here to Mr. Oswald. Mr. For your trouble. Thank you, sir. But who's Mr. Oswald? Miss Cora's gentleman friend. Oh, you mean Mr. Nettlefield? Yes. Mr. Ned Nettlefield. Ned? I know of no other. Thank you. Bessie, tell Jenny to go on for me. I can't stay. Got to get back to the country. Who's there? A poor man with a torn shirt that needs mending. Pip Shepherd? It is. And I'm glad to see you. Come inside. Well now. Is it the man or the shirt that needs looking to? A little bit of both, I reckon. Lucy's asleep. I should hope so. Oh. It's no good looking at me like that. Don't you like to be looked at like this? I can do without that nonsense. You're too cocky by half. Isn't cocky the way you like me? And that way of talking doesn't suit you either. The sooner they get you in the new police, the safer it will be for all of us. Come on, drink this. What makes you think I'm going to become a peeler? I'd heard you'd applied, haven't you? Working with some judge's son. I'm sick of peelers already. Tired of it. I was better off with Toby and the Bow Street Runners. Same class. We knew how each other felt. This is different. Isn't that why they've put you together? My husband used to say he'd never go to sea again. Nine years ago. He came on shore and sweet-taught me into marrying him. A year later he was gone, back to the sea, leaving me with the child. It's his way of life. Do you mean what you're saying any more than he did? Maybe not. I don't know. But it's how I feel at the moment. Well, then. Don't you hear from him? Oh, he sends me a bit of money now and then. I never know where from. We loved each other, but it's something that's done with. Widow cook? <laughs> I'm no widow. I'm an abandoned wife with a chandler shop off Seven Dials. And highly profitable, I've no doubt. Make some trader a good wife. <laughs> it's not being a wife I'm after. I've let you in because I like you. The child likes you. <laughs> She's no more sense than I have. If you need some fun, you're good-looking and kind enough for me. But that's all. You don't have to promise me anything, and I'm sure that I'll promise you the same. Comfort? Comfort? It's cold out there, isn't it, Pip? Awfully cold. I should be going. What? Going back there tonight. Come here. But I... Let me take that shirt. There's a hunt. I, I just... I have to get back. I know. looking very perky for five o'clock in the morning. Just got here, I expect. Something like that. Tom been asking for me. Master Thomas. Well, as he? <laughs> Not this morning. He was expecting you last night. Yes, I know. Hmm. Do you think he's still asleep? Terrible time we've had here. Why? What's happened? Miss Cora came back. Cora? Early hours. Hired a carriage, by all accounts. Oswald found her at three o'clock coming out of Mr Ned's bedroom. Should have heard it. 
He called Mrs Nettlefield. She went mad. Whole out in uproar. Said they'd been talking. Oh, I've heard it called some rum things, but... And I've lost one of her chemises. You duped your brother. Seduced the woman he loves under his own roof. In the very next but one bedroom. We only talked of what may affect all of us. I mean, what if someone had set about to prove he was not my brother? Lies! What are you calling me, lout? I'm not calling you anything. If he's my son, which I swear before God he is, then he's your brother. Oh, heaven forbid, what does that make me? Some trollop! I should have known. Your father was right. He cut you off without a penny because of your dissolute ways. You blaspheming, drunken, womanising... Slop tub! Get ready for the hunt. Once today's over, I want you out of his house. But, Mother... I'd rather have anyone for a son than you, Ned. And that's the truth of it. Try and look as if you know what you're doing, Pip. But I don't. Well, you're only t- t- tightening a few straps, for, for goodness sake. Can you see Ned? He's over with Cora. She's not riding. So, we we know that Ned set Cora up as, as, as Oswald's intended. Yes. Does Oswald know that? Well, he must do. Because he tells everybody she came from Australia with him. Which she didn't. Pip, get into N- Ned's room. See what, you, see what you can find. Uh, papers, anything. Uh, stirrup cup, Pip. What? Take my stirrup cup. Tally ho, eh, Thomas? <laughs> now where? Start with the desk. Damn it. (laughs) Cora? You are a peeler, aren't you? Yes. Can't you find what you're looking for? Not yet. If I tell you... Well... There's a secret compartment behind the top drawer of the tall boy. I'll show you. Well, well. The cuckoo's call. Mr. Matthew Stanger. They've caught the scent! Ah! Oswald! Oswald! My Oswald! It's bolted! It's all right, Mother. It's not! Oh, Oswald! Ah! He'll fall! Leave it to me! On my... No, Thomas! Hang on, Oswald! No, he isn't falling, and he won't fall, will he, Dodie? You were right all along, always right. Never one for saying much, but always right. Let's go back to the house, Mother. Mother! Mother! Such a fool! that my Oswald should be imitated by such a dolt. You're a charlatan, an imposter. Even I couldn't make myself believe you're claptrap any longer. Mother! Oh, shut your clack with your mother this and your mother that. You think I'm a fool? I don't mind making myself look slightly foolish to save the estate and the family name, but I'm not going to make myself look fit for a lunatic asylum. I trusted you. I made myself believe everything. I would have done anything for you. I even turned Ned from the house. I backed up your stupid lies. I swore I saw family resemblances in all your particulars, even though you looked no more like my dearest Arthur than that sideboard. What are you going to do? There are some gentlemen here who want to ask you a few questions. Detective Police Officer Shepherd. Detective Police Officer 
Lieutenant Mother! Yes, you may gulp and send for the others too. Let them all be here to see your shame. Matthew Stanger. I, I believe that is your true name. Am I c c correct? Yes. And did you know the real Oswald N Nettlefield? Yes, I was with him on the Isabella. And that's how you knew about his hands. You wrote that in your first letter. Mrs Nettlefield. It was the hands. It was about the hands that convinced me, that made me believe him. I also. The last time I saw Oswald was at my 14th birthday party. He danced with me. He could not hold hands as one does, nor guide. I, I was with him when the ship went down. He was swept over the side. He tried to hold me, but he had no grasp. And Ned... What were you to get out of all this? He made Matthew Stanger sign this agreement, giving in... Control of the estate once it was his. I'm glad Florence went back to, to town with Dodie. Oh? I meant to propose marriage to her this weekend. But she never did. I kept her waiting so long. Lovely and fresh, a country air. Thought it would do the... Trick. T trick for me. <laughs> Not my kind of air, though. Country air. No nope. pick. <laughs> now I'll try to ask her again. Once we're into town. In A Cuckoo in the Nest by John Peacock, Pip Shepherd was played by Todd Carty and Thomas Tedman by Charles Simpson. Tessa Worsley was Marjorie Nettlefield, Harry Myers, Ned Nettlefield, Stephen Critchlow, Matthew Stanger, Tracy Wiles, Cora, Maggie McCarthy, Dolly Jenks, Deborah Berlin, Jane, Becky Hindley, Susanna Cook, Johan Meredith, the Reverend Chandler, and Elizabeth Conboy, Florence Hatfield. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The pianist was Harry Myers. London Particulars is directed by David Blount.